welcome to St Mark's for our festival of readings and carols. Although the circumstances are very different this year, we can't gather in this building. We can't sing the carols together. It's just as important that we do gather and we're glad that you found your way here. If you enjoy it, share a link with friends and family. So welcome to visitors near and far. Thank you to our readers and all the groups you represent in this wonderful and diverse community. Thank you to our musicians, to our director of music, David Willington, and to all he's worked with, including the Steel City Choristers, the St. Mark's Choir, and the Caro Family Bubble. Thank you to Josh Stevens, our organist. A particular thank you to the Reverend Kate Thompson for skillfully weaving the service together. If you feel able to support the work of St Mark's, then there is a link on the website. But we would particularly ask you to support the Homework Club which is based at the Broomhall Centre, a group which supports young people in their education, and they particularly need some financial support at the moment. Those young people are the ones who need access to the internet, and the Homework Club is one of the ways in which they can get that. So please be as generous as you can. So as we prepare for our service to begin, we hope that through words and music, through the flickering of candles, you will catch a glimpse of that light which shines in the darkness. This year has been difficult for many of us in our communities, in our families and friends, ourselves. So as we prepare for Christmas, we hold before God all those who are struggling at this time. We pray for the strength and courage they need. We also hold before God those groups and individuals who are reaching out with love. May their kindness make a real difference. So, at the heart of the Christmas story is the birth of new hope, revealed in a vulnerable baby, God's love with us, no matter what. Let's take a moment as we prepare. Our first carol is Once in Royal David City.
If you haven't already done so, and if it's safe to do so, you might like to light a candle at home. Jesus, light of the world, kindle in us your hope. Let us pray. God of life and love, as we hear again the Christmas story, may we listen to the voice of the angels reminding us that we are not to live in fear, but to look for hope in unexpected places. Stir within us a passion for justice and equality among all peoples. As outsiders were led towards the Christ child, may our prejudices be challenged that we may recognize beauty and love all around us. May we have the courage we need to be part of the change we long to see in our world. As we long for the coming of your kingdom, Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is The Invitation by Mark Green. To her, the, the invitation came, sky born on angels' wings, heaven-sent and pregnant with impossibilities. For God knows she had reason to say no, her future till then so serenely assured, a home, her good name, a husband to wed, everything indeed for which she thought she'd been bred. Are such so easily cast aside? Would love, security, reputation be so swiftly pried from our determined grasp? How other people's risks seem simpler to take, our own stubborn knots so much harder to break. To us, the royal invitation also comes, though usually in less spectacular script. Sans serif, but daily clear. Which way will we go? Of course we are free to decline, but no promising more for now always leads to less. Better, braver, wiser, surely, to simply say. Here ends the first lesson. Hello, we are Steel City Masters. And we're going to sing for you away in a minute.
a reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. The birth of Jesus, according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken whilst Quirinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem. Because he was a descendant from the house and family of David, he went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her first born son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Here ends the second reading.
Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16. Shepherds delight in the wonder of Jesus' birth. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Here ends the third reading. Hello, we're the Caro family with Jeremy in our bubble and we're going to sing Ding Dong Merrily on High. So do join in if you'd like to. Ding dong merrily on high, in heaven the bells are ringing. Ding dong merrily the sky is ring with angels singing. Incarnation by Anne Lewin. He's grown that baby, not that most people have noticed. He still looks the same, lying there in the straw with animals and shepherds looking on. He's safe there, locked in that moment where time met eternity. Reality, of course, is different. He grew up, astonished people with his insight, disturbed them with his ideas that stretched them into new maturity. Some found him much too difficult to cope with, nailed him down to fit their narrow minds. We are more subtle, keep him helpless, refuse to let him be the man he is, 
adore him as the Christmas baby, eternally unable to grow up until we set him free. By all means, let us pause there at the stable and marvel at the miracle of birth, but we'll never get to know God with us until we learn to find him at the inn, a fellow guest who shares the joy and sorrow, the host who is the life we celebrate. He's grown, that baby. Here ends the fourth reading. Only a Rumour by Sharon Kierkegaard. Although the scribes could explain where the Messiah should be born, they remained quite unperturbed in Jerusalem. They did not accompany the wise men to seek him. Similarly, we may know the whole of Christianity, yet make no movement. The power that moved heaven and earth leaves us completely unmoved. What a difference. The three kings had only a rumour to go by, but it moved them to make that long journey. The scribes were much better informed, much better versed. They sat and studied the scriptures like so many dons, but it did not make them move. Who had the more truth? The three kings who followed a rumour or the scribes who remained sitting with all, all their knowledge. What a vexation it must have been for the kings that the scribes, who gave them the news they wanted, remained quiet in Jerusalem. We are being mocked, the kings might have thought. For indeed, what an atrocious self-contradiction that the scribes should have the knowledge and yet remain still. This is as bad as if a person knows all about Christ and his teachings and his own life expresses the opposite. We are tempted to suppose that such a person wishes to fool us unless we admit that they are only fooling themselves. Here ends the fifth reading.
John the Evangelist reflects on the meaning of Christmas. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Here ends the sixth reading. As our service comes towards its close, a blessing and a sending out. Do look at the St Mark's website and find out what else you can join in with over the Christmas season. There's so much out there from St Mark's and other churches. Please do join in. So let us receive God's blessing in our lives. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the sages, the openness of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God, life giver, pain bearer, love maker, rest upon you and all whom you love, both living and departed this Christmas and always. Amen. <laughs>